So 30 years ago, I used to put my hand in the air and hope to make a taxi stop in the street. That's how things were back then. That was before Uber, of course. Not that long after, if I wanted to book a flight, I would go to a store on a high street and stand in line to book a flight. And now we, of course, have kayak. When I started out over 30 years ago, we used to use 35 millimeter slides to do business reviews and presentations. Now I have AI powered, computer driven, at the touch of a button, an app on my phone, all of the data from all of the markets around the world and all of the medicines. I think you're expecting somebody in their mid 50s to come and explain what I learned on my journey. It's quite the opposite. In fact, the last three years have learned more than I ever thought imaginable. Up until the pandemic, Sanofi was the number one user of Zoom across the entire world. We thought we were bold and brave. A few months after I joined the company at the end of 2019, very quickly we realized that the whole world was now using Zoom and Eric, the CEO, had become a personal friend. At the same time, in the pandemic, we realized that purpose-driven organizations could really excel. Our own people across the world, not least in Southeast Asia, slept on the floor of manufacturing sites. They did it because they're purpose-driven and they understood that if a healthcare company couldn't share medicines, couldn't get important medicines to patients who needed them, irrespective of the pandemic, that this would be a big problem. People went above and beyond in the purpose-driven nature of things. Also, the war itself has been an incredible challenge for all of us. Again, as a healthcare company, we're shipping medicines across the world and to countries that are at war with each other. And we're doing it because we have a social responsibility. So the world has changed. It's changed even more in the last three years. For me, I'm now unlearning as fast as I am learning. The world has moved so fast that the expectation that somebody with my experience can come and tell you how the future will be is out of the window. If I look at talent management just for a second, very recently I sat down with one of our top talent, somebody who works in our venture fund. Her name is Paulina. She just joined the organization. She came in my office. She sat down. I said, welcome to the company. You know, you can have a bold, bright, career ahead of you, full of wonderful experiences. She said, well, Paul, that's not actually why I'm here. I didn't come for the rest of my career. I came to collect experiences. She said, I've got venture fund experience. I'm ready to add value today. She said, but I won't stay too long. I might be here two years, three years. I might be here for a period of time just to learn about how you do things in your company. In return, what I will give you is my expertise. I will collect all my learnings, and I will go on to do something else in my career. I gotta be honest, I was a little bit stunned. You know, I'm used to people telling me, choose a great company and go there for your whole career. Do great work. That's gone. You can collect experiences now and do things in a very different way. The workplace has changed significantly. It used to be be there, before the boss arrives and stay till the boss has gone home. It's gone. Now people saying, I'm not coming to the office unless it smells great, the food is free, there's a wellness opportunity, I may stay late, I may leave early, the Wi-Fi speed's gotta be great, I wanna see my colleagues, I don't wanna write reports, I wanna talk to senior leaders, I wanna fully experience everything that is on offer. The demand for us as employers to create a space that people can enjoy, thrive, meet like-minded people, gain experiences, and then go on and do different things. The expectation of us to provide that has never been higher. Lastly, people don't want to join companies now unless they can see a direct connection to the purpose. They want to understand the social contract. They want to understand from us that we're committed to society, that we're committed to diversity and inclusion and that our commitment is more than a poster by the elevator. Our commitment is real. Our commitment is measurable. Our commitment is demonstrated. And that we will reduce our carbon footprint. We will make sure that the people in the company represent society. 
and that we will not stop until we've managed to achieve those goals. So everything has changed. If you're at the beginning of your career, you're probably thinking, we're all dinosaurs, people like me. You may be thinking companies, big companies are dinosaurs. The truth is, we're learning too. The truth is, we're unlearning as organizations and relearning. We need talent, we need smart people, we need startups, we need people that want to come and share what they're doing to help us get better. It's okay if you have a small company with three people in it. If you think you can help us raise our game, do something great for patients, for medicine, for healthcare, you can do these things. We need you to do these things. We need to be stretched. Now, while all has changed, while the world is compressed, while everything is dramatically different, you still have 40 years to have an impact. One thing that hasn't changed, if you're sat here and you're 25, you have 40 years to do something that's never been done before. My call to action for you as the world gets faster is to make sure you take the moment, you consider companies like ours, you share your experiences, you make us better, you help us unlearn, you help us relearn, you change the practice of medicine, and you do things with data and digital that have simply never been done before. This is a song from when I started my career. I started it in Manchester in the early 90s. I'll leave you with Oasis, Champagne Supernova.